Okay, now for a word about tarantula molting. So tarantula molting means uh, shedding. So the shedding is a real crucial part of a tarantula's life. Um, they can survive from it and they can also die from it if you don't have the proper conditions. So I'm going to show you what a tea looks like in pre-molt. Um, in my last tarantula, word about tarantula molting, I had my therapist a blondie. Well, she molted and um, a lot of my videos, as I said to you before, are gone. So I have to recreate all these videos. So. I uh, have a tarantula in pre-molt right now, so I'm going to show you what it is. Um, yeah, just, just a second. Okay, so there's about four signs that a tarantula is in pre-molt. So the first one is you have to look for a um, ball patch in the abdomen and you have to make sure if it's dark. So. I have a tea that's almost in pre-mold. It looks like in pre-mold. She's losing, she's losing her colors. So this is my Ephobus moranus. This is the French Guiana skeleton tarantula. So this particular genus doesn't have urticating hairs on the abdomen. So it's kind of hard to tell um, if she's in pre-mold or not. But there's other ways to tell if it's in pre-mold. The second way to look for is a discoloration of the tarantula. So you can see. A lot of her skeleton legs were dis were gone, are gone. So you can see the um, the back hind legs. There's no skeleton patterns, and it's starting to fade. So you have to look for fading colors. The third sign is um, tendency to burrow. So a lot of teas will tend to hide themselves when they molt. So that's why my um, OBT hasn't come out in such a long time because it was in pre-molt and it finally molted, but I've still never seen that one before. It's it's just as uh, reclusive as, as my cobalt blue, half of them are living them. So the fourth sign, uh, and the last sign is refusal to eat. Some tarantulas, like very hungry tarantulas, especially like the Acanthoscurus species, will, which are very great eaters, will suddenly stop eating if they're in pre-molt. So it's not always seen by Grandma Sol Rosetta chewing rose because they have this tendency to fast for long periods of time so it's kind of hard to, to know when they'll be in pre but they but you still exhibit the three other signs you know like the um, dark ball patch on the abdomen uh, you'll see uh, this coloration of their le of their body colors and also the tendency to burrow so what happens when a tarantula will molt so let me just close my Morena's tank. Uh, just a second. There we go. Kind of a mean key. Okay, so what happens when a tarantula will So, what a tarantula will do is, um, they frequently make, uh, web beds. They'll lie on their back, and will literally push themselves out of their own body. So, as a result, you get a fully intact skin. So this is my T Blondie mold. She was at eight and a half inches. Now she's ten inches. So you can see the. Uh, see, hang on, there's not enough light. So you can see all of her body is intact. You have all the eight legs, including the pedipalps. You have the fangs. I don't know if you can see the fangs and uh, the carapace and the admin. So if you want to sex a tarantula, you always have to check for the molt. Um, you have to see if uh, they have spermatheking, which I'll explain later in another video. And if it has a spermatheking, it's female. If not, then it's a male. So so what are the conditions to for your tarantula to molt successfully? Well, the most important thing is uh, humidity. A lot of tarantulas need humidity when they molt. So what I would do is uh, to get the humidifier right here. As you can see, there's uh, steam going on. And literally just put it near the tarantula's tank. So this way, it will build up moisture on its old skin and it will be much more easier to take out for the tarantula to get and it will have uh, no problems with that. 
So you can have wet molts. Uh, if your tarantula is too dry, it can have a wet molt where it'll lose a lot of fluids, like in the case of my pink toe. She had a semi-wet molt, but I managed to save her by putting him, her in the ICU. And uh, she was fine after that. So you just want to make sure you have to really give humidity to our tarantulas. And it wouldn't hurt to crank up the heat because uh, you want to mimic these conditions. Like um, for a Therophosa blondie molt, um, I kept my room around uh, 83 to 84 degrees Fahrenheit and the humidity at least around a uh, good 85 to 90 percent just to really make sure she would molt it. It took her at least 12 hours to molt. So I'll show you the finished product of her. Um, I'll show, be showing it to her in my, my tea video, tea tour video, which will be coming up um, very soon. So this is constantly my largest tarantula that I own. Uh, she's a 10 inch female. And here she is. Really awesome tea. And she's a monster. Alright, so, uh, see you later.